Uh, well, great to be here at Farm Technology Days. This is always a blast, and it's great to see Wood County host here. Uh, great event, great opportunity, really, uh, in, in part to thank our farmers and their farm families, uh, but also to see some of the new exciting innovations and technologies. Uh, that's the key, you know, is to help our farmers be more productive. At the same time, hopefully, as we mentioned in our comments, help open up more markets, continue to have, whether it's uh, the dairy industry or any of our other uh, agricultural markets in this state, uh, we understand that while farming uh, puts in about eight, just over $88 billion in the state's economy, it's more than just a business. It really is a way of life, and so we want to help with that. That's why today we were announced last month in June the Dairy Task Force 2.0. Uh, today, we announced the 31 individuals who will be a part of that. Uh, I want to thank uh, certainly our Ag Secretary, Sheila Harsdorf, uh, but also Ray Cross and Mark Stevenson from the UW, who really helped us sort through names from all over the state so that we got uh, dairy farmers from all different types of operations. And we got processors, marketers, cheesemakers, other groups, so that there's really a bit of representation from every different part of the state and every different type uh, of uh, dairy interest in the state. And our hope will be much like it was in the mid-80s, uh, that they'll take the time to give us a series of recommendations, uh, which last time was 75, a good lion's share of which were implemented. And we think that's going to be key to helping make sure that we have, for the next quarter century or more, strong dairy industry in the state of Wisconsin. Governor, we heard from other industries, corn growers, soybean growers, pork, beef producers. We're strictly looking at dairy in this task force, but they're hurting too. Well, absolutely. Uh, this was just a continuation of what we did before, but we talk about markets. When I announced that earlier in the year, our market development executive order isn't limited to just dairy. It's for all of our markets, for every bit of agriculture. Uh, that's critically important. And... Um, you know, one of the things I've said before is I wish nationally they'd spend more time talking about something I highlighted a month ago when the president was at the G7. Uh, the president himself said we should get to no tariffs. To me, that's the right answer for farmers, for manufacturers, for others in the state. If we could get, as the president himself said, to no tariffs, or at least as close as we can get, that would be good. Because we saw a year ago the negative impact, for example, on, on other countries, even a great trading partner like Canada, just what they did in Ontario with uh, price controls on the dairy industry, we saw what it did uh, to those farm families affected by the decision by Grassland. That was driven uh, because of Canadian policy on dairy. And we need to have a level playing field. And so uh, I'd like to get to where the president himself said he was aiming for, at least in the G7, that's no tariffs. Have you made any calls yourself, Governor? You said a lot of this is relationship-based. Mm -hmm. Tariffs don't stop it. It just makes it more expensive. Are you doing anything to try to intercede Canada-Mexico? Sure. We've talked. I talked to the Canadian ambassador a few weeks ago in uh, Washington when I was in for the Select USA. Uh, we understand that uh, uh, Canada is important to us and we're important to them. Uh, so it cuts both ways. Same thing with uh, with Mexico. And so, again, my why I keep stressing is if, if everybody, both in this country and even our trading partners, if they know our end game is to get to a level playing field with no uh, tariffs like the president himself talked about, I think that would go a long way because because people, I think a lot of us in America don't realize Canada, Mexico, Europe, a lot of our, our, our allies, our trading partners, have for years tacked on a lot of tariffs and other cost controls, and it would just be better off for us if there were none of those, and we and con obviously conversely didn't put any on. Our farmers, our manufacturers, for that matter, our workers in the state can compete with anyone if it's on a level playing field. Governor, you talk some, of course this is Farm Tech Days, but uh, farming covers a lot of things, dairy industry, cranberry industry. How do you kind of be the parent of all that and not give one of them too much love and you know make sure they all thrive the same amount, I guess? When we promote markets around the world, um, you know, it's a lot of it. We, we find a niche. So, for example, last time I was at a dairy expo uh, in Guadalajara in Mexico, um, in that particular one, we, we paired cheese up with tequila, uh, and so it was a good fit for the market. We had 19 different cheeses. Thank God the proper way to, uh, to drink tequila is sipping it, not taking shots. So I did a sip of each along with the cheese, or I would have been under the table. I would have made news down there. Uh, but, but, you know, that was a market where it was unique to that. In other places where maybe cranberries or ginseng haven't been as widely known, uh, we try and push those markets. It's really about, for us, um, we push everything, but oftentimes it's trying to meet uh, where there's a, an opening for a market and uh, making those connections. But you're right, as I mentioned in the comments, dairy and cheese people know a lot of, but uh, corn, soybeans, beef, pork, uh, ginseng, cranberries, cherries, potatoes, um, other vegetables. A lot of people don't know. We're either tops or one of the top two or three states in each of those categories. And uh, I think sometimes people forget about the widespread 
impact uh, that agriculture has in the state. Are there other things the state can do that can help the farmer situation? Well, some of what we've done and need to continue to do, I mean, even simple things like holding property taxes down. Before I came in, property taxes went up 27%. Visually, you can see, if you own a lot of property, property taxes going up a lot is a big burden. Uh, we've held that down. It's actually lower today than it was before we started. Same thing with production on agriculture, similar to what we did with manufacturing. Uh, we've effectively wiped out almost all. It's 0.4%, uh, so it's a pretty low tax there. And then I think continue to find ways to, to cut through the red tape. We want to have protect public health and public safety, but we want to do so in a way that doesn't uh, handcuff our, our farmers and our agribusiness partners uh, from being able to, to sell products, grow products, produce products. And I think the more we can do to streamline that process so that it's not just in opening markets up, it's helping keep the cost down in the first place of uh, being involved in farming. That was remarks from Governor Scott Walker on the importance of agribusiness here in Wisconsin. Thanks for tuning in. Thank <laughs> you.